Well, guys, we are here. Old versus New number 100. And I wanted to do something kind of special for Old versus New 100. And I kind of thought about it, and I was thinking, what kind of figure could I really do for the 100th episode? And I looked back to my first episode, and I saw that I did G1 Brawl versus Combiner Wars Brawl. And it got me thinking, well, not too long ago, someone mentioned, hey, you never did an old versus new on Studio Series Brawl in 2007 Brawl, and I'm shocked that I never have. I'm absolutely shocked that this video never came into being, <laughs> never came up in my mind, because I've done old versus news for, like, Studio Series Megatrons, Shockwaves, I think I did it for Starscream, maybe... If I haven't, I probably should, because I can. Uh, barricade, I think I might have done. I don't know. Did I do Barricade? Because I, I, I don't have the 2007 one, and I don't like the 2007 one. I don't know. Either way, never did Brawl. So here we are with old versus new number 100, taking a look at my original 2007 Deluxe Class Brawl and my Studio Series one that came out, jeez, maybe... 2019. This was a fairly early Studio Series figure. It's been around for a while. Now, this is a special episode for me because this original 2007 Deluxe Brawl is the very first Transformers toy that I ever bought on my own, making my own decision to purchase the figure. Every other Transformer I got before this Brawl was a birthday or Christmas gift. So this one was the first time I went into a store and my parents were like, pick out a toy, and I chose the Deluxe Brawl. I did have the option to get the Leader Brawl, but for whatever reason, I really wanted the Deluxe one. I think I liked the size better. It wasn't super big. And it was also packed in vehicle mode, so I was kind of excited to transform it into the robot mode. And I, that's kind of a reason why I miss toys not being packed in, in vehicle mode anymore. <laughs> Because it's always exciting seeing that vehicle mode in the box and wondering what the robot mode is going to be like. Obviously, nowadays, we have pictures, reviews, so on and so forth, so we have an idea. But yeah, uh, if you want to kind of get a look at my Min on Card Brawl, I did make a YouTube short about it. But, uh, obviously, we can see one is a Deluxe and one is a Voyager. Uh, the original Brawl was released as a Deluxe class and a Leader class. I feel like the Leader class one was kind of made to be the in scale with everybody else Brawl, because Brawl was huge in the movie, absolutely gigantic, and they made him a little too big, but still, he's a tank. Leader class works for a tank, even though they didn't make a leader class blackout until Studio Series, which I also did an old versus new on him, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, I found it very interesting that he only got a deluxe and a leader, and I'm very happy for Studio Series he got a Voyager, because I think this is about the right size I think he should be. I think he should be a Voyager. I'm very excited for the upcoming movie masterpiece brawl. I don't think that has like been officially unveiled yet, but we know it's going to happen. I'm sure there's listings or something. I can't wait. I love Brawl. I don't get all the movie masterpiece Decepticons, but Brawl is definitely one I am 100% going to get. So, very excited for that. And, very excited to talk about these. I've been rambling long enough. Let's get into it. So, yeah. The uh, good old Deluxe 2007 one. I love this guy so much. It is not a perfect figure. Not at all. But I still absolutely love it. One detail I've always loved with this Deluxe Brawl is his face. And it's very funny I say that because his face is not accurate. Because he has a mouth where the gold is. And on this figure, it's just kind of like a gold block with a little line on it. That's not really his proper mouth. And I always kind of saw the big, like, nose guard, the silver part, as a big ol' frown. And it always just looked so cool to me, for whatever reason. Just seeing this big ol' tank guy with this big ol' frowny face. It just looked really cool to me, and I still, all these years later, cannot unsee that. It's just what I imagine this Brawl figure as. Unfortunately, I lost it to time, but I had, like, an old Crayola PC game. And what I did, I practiced, like, drawing. I drew one half of his face, and then I cloned it and flipped it, and I actually had, like, the full head. Because <laughs> I just loved his head that much. I thought it looked that cool. I love the treads on the shoulders. That's always been a detail of movie Brawl that I just absolutely cannot get enough of. He's got the little turrets at the shoulders, too, as always, looking very cool. He has his little machine gun claw thing on this arm, and on this arm he has his big old like, quad cannon, and it has the big cannon on the other side. Not necessarily accurate to have 
both on one arm, but I think it's kind of just how they figured it out for the transformation. And it still kind of works, even though you do have this big old thing sticking off. I love his minesweeper things that are kind of inward on the chest. <clears throat> I've seen some people kind of like debate how these should be configured. Like some people are like, oh, this should be like this. It should be like, you know, totally tucked inward. I think from what I've seen in the movie and how I kind of like it, I think this is the most accurate configuration, kind of going inward towards his stomach. Uh, overall, I just, I love the look of it. He's got a lot of paint, a lot of nice blacks and kind of coppery colors, a little bit of camo here and there. And yeah, it's looking really, really cool. I really love the camo, and I really am kind of missing the camo on the Studio Series 1. It's kind of there in the tank mode, but it really isn't super visible in the robot mode. Like, there really is no camo in the robot mode. But at least for this robot mode, you do see some with the chest, because the chest is actually the front of the tank. I just, I love this guy. He does have a pretty big backpack, <laughs> that being like the entire tank turret. But eh, it's okay. It works. It works. And he does have these little uh, panels on the side of his legs, too, that kind of flop around. Uh, but still, I love him. He does have one very crucial problem, though. Uh, yeah, this is a bit of a problem. How his arms are supposed to work, uh, you're supposed to take these panels and tab them in right there. And it's supposed to lock in the backpack into the torso. The problem with the original 2007 copy is that they just don't tab in. <laughs> they just don't. So one of the best ways to kind of keep all this locked together is to squeeze those in the best you can <clears throat> and take these panels right here and kind of pinch them. Kind of got to pinch it into place. And then it kind of fits, but not really. They did correct this with like Revenge of the Fallen redecos, and I really appreciate that. Uh, but I think that this isn't that big of an issue. It didn't really hinder my enjoyment of this guy as a kid, even though I can say there were many a times where this guy was absolutely bisected. There's many a times where this toy was in two different toy bins, this chunk and this chunk. Because <laughs> I got this guy when I was like uh, nine, I think. So I was still in the age of like playing with toys and all that. So I definitely, I definitely lost many of these, this guy's pieces throughout the years, but thankfully I was able to recover them for the most part. Uh, his articulation is pretty good, and I actually had one point of articulation I didn't even really know about when I was a kid, which is kind of funny. Uh, so he has a ball joint at the head and a little bit of a wiggle waggle for the panel right there. Uh, he has ball joints at the shoulders, swivels at the elbows, uh, kind of a weak bend at the elbow, but something's better than nothing. Uh, nothing at the wrist. Uh, you can rotate both arm attachments and move these claws. Uh, he does have a waist swivel. At least I believe he does. Doesn't he? I'm pretty sure he does. Yeah, it's very slight. And I think, oh, you know what? He does, but it's for transformation, isn't it? Yeah. Right? Right? It's like he's got a little bit of wiggle, but it's not moving. I don't know. I'll just say he doesn't, but he does. <laughs> For whatever reason, I always remembered him having a nice waist swivel, but I guess I'm just mistaken. Uh, he does have ball joints at the hips. Uh, this is the point of articulation I didn't realize when I was a kid. He has a hinge at the knee. I did not realize he had a hinge knee. I always thought his knees just moved side to side like this for the transformation. And then the feet as well move up and down. No real tilt, though. One bit of transformation that I always kind of neglect is that these big old leg panels actually like move back and out a little bit, but it's so easy to just accidentally push them back that I kind of don't bother. And you can see as I've been moving them, he's kind of started to fall apart. So it's not the most solid figure, not whatsoever, but it's still one that's very, Ooh, there goes the missile. <laughs> Let's not lose that again. Uh, that missile was lost for like 10 years. Uh, yeah, not the most solid figure, but definitely one that is very near and dear to my heart. Studio Series, then, is absolutely awesome, and I love this guy. He does have a couple issues that, thankfully, the oversized KO that I have corrected for the most part. Uh, he doesn't have the camo. The oversized, correct, the oversized one corrected that. Uh, he's got some weird kibble in some odd places, and the oversized one corrected that. I, I love this figure, but honestly, if you want a brawl... I would get like the Black Mamba oversized knockoff of this because it's just so much cooler. I love it. It's it's currently displayed with my movie masterpieces, but once the real movie masterpiece one comes out, I'll probably just move it over with like my little brawl focus because I have all my brawls in the same place. How many times 
Are people going to say, take a shot every time he says brawl and it sounds like ball instead? I know, I know. My R's aren't the most pronounced when I say brawl, but I have to say brawl so many different times in this video. Some of them are going to be weaker than others. So I love this guy. I love the head sculpt because it's actually movie accurate, because it actually has the mouth now. And honestly, given time and, you know, consideration of the fact that this is how he is supposed to look, I like this look for Brawl a lot more. I like that mouth and the nose guard. I think it looks way cooler. It's just, I can't see it on the original deluxe mold. I can't. It's just something about the sculpt. It's too weak. I can't see it. Still love that sculpt, but obviously... I think this head sculpt looks a lot cooler. This figure is a much deeper green, if you may uh, have guessed. The green is a much deeper shade, which I think is more accurate to the movie, but I don't know, I'm missing kind of some of the color variety that the original 2007 had. This one doesn't have any copper on him. It's just green and silver for the most part. And it still looks really cool, don't get me wrong, but I'm missing some of that copper, some of that black, some of that extra flair that those added colors gave to the original 2007 one. Still has the shoulder cannons, which look really cool. Still has these cannons up here. And if I'm not mistaken, on this one, you can actually have them facing up, which is really cool. You can't really do that on the original 2007, but this one you can, and that looks super cool. I don't remember, did he do that in the movie? I might be thinking of, like, Mixmaster or something, but I don't know. I can still see him just like, ugh, that just looks cool. It's a cool thing that this one can do, and I appreciate it. Uh, he does have the same kind of, you know, machine gun arm blade on this side, and it looks very nice. He does have a lot of kibble on his arms, though. Like, that is a lot of kibble. It's kind of a lot. <laughs> but it's not that bad. It's just kind of not that great. Uh, he does have the little spiky things on his stomach again. And again, some people think they look better faced inward like this. I don't know, man. Like, I just like them better down. I feel like whenever I see it in the movie and whenever I think of Brawl, like, I think of the pictures of it down. But I definitely see where people come from where, like, it's supposed to be like that. But I don't know. Personal preference. I'm going to chalk it up to personal preference. Uh, this side has the, uh, like, quad missile launcher thing. And I love, like, little scope detailing right there. That looks so cool. I do appreciate the silver paint on the arms. I think it does add at least some color, but again, I'm, I'm missing some other colors. Uh, this one, does he have a waist swivel? No, he does not at all. Uh, but he does still have a lot of nice little details here and there. You know, he's got, you know, a lot of nice sculpted armor paneling on the legs. I do think the legs look a lot better on this one. It does have very similar kibble on the back of the legs with like the panels with all the tank treads on it, but it's not too bad. Uh, he does have one very bad piece of kibble, and you may have already noticed it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the main tank turret is just dangling between his legs. And it looks bad. Thankfully, the oversized knockoff found a way to, like, have it fold up and collapse, so it's not just sticking down. But, yeah, it just looks very odd for in certain poses. Very odd. Thankfully, I don't think it can hinge... In between his legs it just stays back there because otherwise I can guarantee you what some people would do but you know it's, it's not the end of the world it's just not the greatest I do think this is an objectively better figure than this one for sure <laughs> definitely an objectively better figure for articulation on this guy you already kind of saw how his backpack moves around he has a ball joint at the head but it mostly just functions as kind of like a swivel with a little bit of bobble he has universals at the shoulders which move very nicely he has a bicep swivel. He has kind of like a in and out hinge as well, and also an elbow bend. Nothing at the waist. He has universal joints at the hips that move pretty well. I really like that little gray piece. I don't know, it just adds like a dimension of articulation that I really enjoy seeing. Uh, thigh swivel, knee bend, and his ankles pretty much don't move at all. Uh, I think they might be able to if you like untab them. But if you untab them, the joint's a little loose and doesn't function the greatest. But still, it's a piece of articulation you can work with. It's just not really intended since it tabs into place with the transformation. So yeah, I really love both of these. Really, really do. I would say I definitely have to give the robot mode to the Studio Series, obviously, because it doesn't fall apart. <laughs> and it's just... You know, has the hindsight of, this is actually how he looks in the movie, you know? 
They're both really nice, though. They're both Brawl. He's my favorite movie, Decepticon. I I have pretty much every Brawl toy. I don't have the Fast Action Battler yet, though. And I don't have a complete leader class. I need to work on that. Anyways, let's transform them. So, I have transformed this guy so many times, but it actually has been quite a while. So, bear with me if I'm kind of forgetting some orders of operation. Because in classic JCC2224 fashion... I do this all by memory. So the arms are usually one of the things I do first. So these panels kind of do a little flip me do and the tank turret does a little flip me do and just tabs in right there. I love how the arms like fold in and collapse into the tank turret. I've always loved that. I think it just works really well and it's pretty efficient at getting you a tank turret. And there we go. Tank turret done. Oop, just came off. Nice. <laughs> Again, the amount of times that that has detached. Because there really should have been a pin right there. There really should have. And you can see over the years where that kind of clips in, it's gotten worn down. Because I've played with this guy so many times. It just, it happens. It just untabs. They really, especially like how much weight that is on that hinge. It really should have had a pin. It really should have. All right, what's next? So we are going to take the chest... And he does have a bit of an auto-morph. Let's rotate the head, though, so we don't see the face. When we do the auto-morph, it's going to collapse the head in and move the treads down to the side. And I think that is super cool. I always loved that growing up. It just was such a cool feature of the transformation. Then the legs are pretty simple. We're going to take these old gas cans, move them horizontally, flip the feet right by them, and then we'll take these panels marry them up with the treads on the front and then where the knees kind of have a bit of a inward bend that's where they collapse right by each other tab in nicely and then make sure that's all tabbed in and nicely squeezed up front and then last but not least we just collapse the tank turret rotate it around and there we go there's our very simple but very effective transformation for our original 2007 brawl and yeah it's great I love this transformation, and I think the tank mode is super, super nice. I love the camo on the tank mode. It, it just looks so good. I wish more of the camo shined through in the robot mode. I really do, but I still appreciate it that it's here. Uh, you have independent motion on this tank turret. Obviously, these little turrets you can move independently because they're on a ball joint and a little swivel. You can't move the main one up or down, but obviously it does have the firing missile. And you can rotate the entire thing which is very nice for play and functionality. I really enjoyed this as a tank toy almost as much as I enjoyed it as a Transformer. It is a very, very nice tank. Yeah, I love it. It's really nice. Really, really nice. And you can adjust the little minesweepers up front, and it's just, it's so cool. It's so cool. Love it, love it, love it. And it has been quite a while since I've transformed this one as well, so you also have to bear with me. Unfortunately, these accessories are just an instance of they pop off and you can plug them onto the tank if you want, but they are not accurate whatsoever. They do not hide. They do not really collapse. They are just accessories that plug onto them. Uh, how do we do this one? Like I said, it has been a while. So his chest is kind of like a fake out chest. That much I remember. He does not have like a legit chest, but we just kind of collapse all of that in and then kind of adjust the chest right there. Uh, he does have these little panels that kind of get in the way, so then we can move the little minesweeper pieces up. And I'm just kind of doing this with whatever flow I'm feeling. I'm just moving parts and seeing what happens. Uh, this is the tank turret right here, at least part of it. And this will move and rotate. Oop, there goes that. One thing I don't enjoy is how... This is sculpted. These little missile pods are always kind of facing off to the side and not straight. I don't really know if that's accurate, but it doesn't really sit right with me. Uh, and then the arms, we will untab. I'm just doing this totally out of order. I'm just doing this however I feel, pretty much. And then the tank treads, I know, will move down a little bit. Okay, we're making progress. We're making progress. And then we'll rotate this entire assembly, because that is the tank turret. Then once we have that rotated, we can move this panel up right there and kind of complete the front of the tank. And then the head will hide and collapse right in there, just like so. 
And you can actually see a little bit of his head poking out, which I think is kind of cute. I appreciate that. Uh, it's not to like an ugly extent. It's just to a, uh, hi, I'm here extent. Uh, and then the arms, I know they contort in such a way where it all lines up. <laughs> there is a lot of hinges in these arms, but I managed, I managed, we figured it out. We figured it out. If you're trying to watch my videos to like know how to transform these, you're watching the wrong channel. Because I hardly know either. I just do it for fun. Because see, like I, I, I feel like I'm a broken record when I explain how I enjoy Transformers toys. I enjoy them as a puzzle. So if people struggle with me like not figuring it out right away, I treat it like a puzzle. And sometimes I put a piece in the wrong in the wrong spot. <laughs> sometimes I just do. Because I think they're three toys in one, you know? They are a puzzle, they are an action figure, and they are whatever alternate mode they turn into. So there's the tank turret all done. And I love the camo on the tank mode, but it's tragic. There is none of it visible in the robot mode. So then we will uncurl the legs here and kind of bring those to the side. And the feet kind of do something similar, but they do have a tab. You actually have to fold out from the foot so the feet can tab together, which is kind of funny. Untab the foot, collapse that in. Uncurl this. You can tell, like, there's some figures I'm very good at transforming because I enjoy them so much. I've transformed them a lot. And there's others I haven't touched in, like, five years. All right. There we go. Here is our Studio Series Brawl in his movie-accurate complete tank mode. But we do have the option, if we want to just plug these up top, we can. Uh, obviously, you're, you can guess pretty quickly how I feel about this. Those are not staying on. <laughs> and visually, this tank mode looks so badass. You still have the adjustable little minesweepers. Uh, we do have an adjustable top turret if you untab it. But we do not have an adjustable main turret, which is kind of frustrating. Uh, given how the main turret is still like made out of the arms, but... It just can't really move anymore because the swivel that it's on for the transformation is kind of locked in. And I feel like they could have engineered it where you could swivel the main turret, but they just didn't have the foresight to do that. I really love the colors in the tank mode. I think this is where a lot of the paint budget went with the camo because I think the camo on this one looks a lot better than the original one. It has a lot of nicely little sculpted details too. I think the back looks a lot better. I just think it looks a lot better overall. You can see that, like the fingers a little bit, but it just looks like little silver mechanically bits. You can't even really tell their fingers. Uh, yeah, love it, love it, love it. Love the little canopy right there. It's just so cool. I love me a good old big green military tank, and Brawl is definitely one of the coolest. If I'm not mistaken, I I have like a an incomplete fun fact about Brawl, but the prop that was used for Brawl was actually from another action movie, and they just, like, re-outfitted it with, like, all of Brawl's extra weapons and everything. If I'm not mistaken, I don't remember what movie it's from. I'd have to check TF Wiki again. Uh, but I will actually leave it to you guys uh, if you want to post in the comments if you know what movie that Brawl's tank mode was from originally. I'd, you know, put down the comments. Please check and see if someone's already put it. Please. Because it doesn't need to be down there five times. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Here is old versus new 100 said and done. We have Brawl versus Brawl. As I've already established, Brawl means a lot to me. He's just one of my favorite Decepticons. He's my favorite Bayverse Decepticon. He was the first Transformer I ever bought out of my own choice. And as I'm talking about it, I'm looking at my wall and seeing my carded one. And it just makes me so happy being able to relive that moment of purchasing it just by seeing the carded one. I love this guy absolutely love it. Which one do I recommend? I, as much as I love the old deluxe, I definitely have a lot of nostalgia goggles for it. <laughs> and if you just want one brawl in your Michael Bay Transformers movie collection, obviously the studio series is the way to go. You know, if you are fine with him being huge, I think the oversized knockoff makes so many improvements to it and is one of the best Transformers in my collection. It is so nice. But the Studio Series is still very cool, too. 
I'm very excited to see how the movie masterpiece Brawl handles itself. I'm hoping it isn't brittle and breaks like a lot of these latest masterpiece figures have been like. Because that's the reason I kind of don't mess with masterpieces. Because they're very hit or miss when it comes to their quality. Which is very surprising considering how expensive they are. But Brawl is Brawl. I'm going to get Brawl. Uh, please don't post in the comments how many times I said brawl that sounds like a ball. Please don't. <laughs> there is one video where I was talking about like a like my bot shots brawl and my like Legion tank war I think, and I was I said these are these are blue brawls, and so many people posted in the comments how how similar that sounded to another phrase. Anyways, let me know what you think. Special shout out to channel members as always. Thank you all so much for the continued support. That is old versus new 100 said and, said and done. Episode 101 is going to be animated Bumblebee that I actually filmed before this. And then I realized the next episode was the 100th and I wanted it to be more special than that. So yeah, <laughs> look forward to the next episode. Have a great one, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.